Hello, my name is Drew Morgan. I'm a colonel in the United States Army and a NASA astronaut. And I just recently returned from a mission to the International Space Station. I lived on board the ISS for nine months. I launched in July of 2019, and I just landed in April of 2020. Well, Arthur, great question. It's actually very basic. Uh, for the most part, NASA requires us to have a degree. Uh, we must study um, in university a science or engineering, and then pursue an advanced degree uh, to the master's level in one of those areas. And it could be any kind of science. It could be physics, it could be chemistry, it could be biology. In my case, I'm a medical doctor. Um, I also have an engineering degree. I studied environmental engineering. Um, you could be an engineer of all different types of disciplines as well. You could be a nuclear engineer, an aerospace engineer, a mechanical engineer. Um, but basically, mathematics, science, engineering, those are the areas that most astronauts come from. Uh, well, Isaac, in space, our time is very precious, so all of our time is scheduled for us. So we have, uh, we wake up in the morning and we go right to work. And we do things like maintaining the, the ISS. The ISS has been up, uh, up there for over 20 years now, and so there are pieces and parts that we have to change out, um, change filters, um, install a new computer. We're also doing science experiments constantly. While I was on board the ISS, we conducted almost 300 different science experiments and um, that takes up a portion of our day. And then we also have time in our day scheduled for us to eat, to do personal hygiene, to exercise. Exercise is a very important part of our day. Almost two hours of, of every day is, is devoted just to exercise. I thought we also have time to look out the window. We also have time to call our families. I'm able to call using a voice over internet phone. Um, so every moment is scheduled for us. Well, Harper and Arlo, that's a great couple of questions there. Um, first of all, so the ISS orbits about 250 miles above the Earth's surface, so about 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Um, and so when we make a, our orbit around the Earth, it takes us about 90 minutes to um, make a complete trip. We can see the moon at uh, different portions of our orbit, but the moon is actually 250,000 miles away from us. And so, that is actually, if we're only 250 uh, miles or 400 kilometers off the surface of the Earth, it doesn't really put us that much closer to the moon. But what it does do is it puts us above the Earth's atmosphere. And so we have a very clear view of the moon in a way that you don't have on the Earth when you look through the atmosphere because the atmosphere distorts light to some degree. and We can get a really good crystal clear view. But that doesn't, I would say that it doesn't look that much bigger. In to your question about sunglasses, do we wear sunglasses in space? So, in fact, we do have to wear sunglasses when we look out the window um, in a window called the cupola, which faces the Earth and gives us a 360 degree view of the Earth. We do, during the day, wear sunglasses to protect our eyes from a variety of different uh, po uh, potential threats to our vision because the sun is very bright up there and there are a lot of other things that could hurt our eyes and so we do take extra measures to protect our eyes. Scout, I didn't see any UFOs or aliens, but it doesn't mean that they don't exist. Diane, sleep is important on Earth and in space, and we actually, I'm, I mentioned that every moment of our day is scheduled and the time that we sleep is scheduled too. We're scheduled for eight and a half hours of sleep. We can get more if we'd like. Um, we just go to bed a little bit earlier, but sleep is, is very important because we do get very tired up there and we need our minds to be very well rested for each work day because our days are very full. Um, when some astronauts describe feeling like they get better sleep in space and others feel like they don't get as good a sleep as they do in space, or it takes them a couple weeks to get used to. I will say that I had some of the best sleep of my life up there because you're very, your body's very relaxed um, and it's very cool and dark inside of our crew quarters. It's very, very comfortable. I slept very well. Um, our crew quarters, they're 
we each have something uh, the size of a very small closet or a small uh, phone booth, if you're familiar with a, what a, a phone booth is. Very, very small, not much bigger than, uh, I can't, I can barely just about reach my hands out and touch the other wall. It's pretty small and it has a sleeping bag in it. And uh, where my crew quarters were positioned was on the wall. So I actually was sleeping in the upright position relative to the ISS but we have no perception of what up and down is in space, so it just felt like I was sleeping, floating. Great question, Holly. Um, when we are on board the ISS, we're making an orbit around the Earth once every 90 minutes, and so we see a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes um, as we make our trip around the Earth. But we are only about 400 kilometers off the surface of the Earth, so we're not a whole lot closer to the Earth, but what we don't have is the protection of the Earth's atmosphere. So the Earth's atmosphere is all below us, and so that does mean that the uh, sun's rays have a more harsh effect on the materials of the space station. So we designed them specifically to uh, be adapted to the harshness of the temperature fluctuations between being in the sun and then being out of the sun constantly every 45 minutes the entire time the space station orbits. Uh, one other thing that we, we do to preserve our observations is that we often are taking samples and our samples are preserved by freezing or refrigerating and then we return them to Earth on a vehicle, a cargo vehicle returning to Earth like the SpaceX Dragon, uh, which allows us to return samples to the Earth for the scientists to then study um, after they return. Yes, Beck, uh, we need to bathe in space to keep clean. Uh, we do have a towel that we can uh, connect to a machine that puts hot water in it for us and then we wipe down, we wipe down our bodies, we wipe down our hair and it cleans us up very nicely. I always felt very clean and nobody ever told me, none of my crewmates ever said that I smelled badly. Well, Coco, I think my favorite part of being an astronaut is being part of a really, really cool team. Not just my other crewmates, my other, the other astronauts, but that we have mission control centers all over the world. Um, we have mission control centers in Houston, a mission control center in near Tokyo, Japan, one in Moscow, Russia, and then uh, one in near Munich, Germany. So we get to speak to flight controllers all over the world. We know that there are literally hundreds of people and engineers constantly thinking about all the problems that we're facing in space and giving us the best information possible. And then not only the astronauts that I get to fly with, but the astronauts that I serve with on the ground come from all over the world. And um, that is definitely the most, most uh, rewarding part. Well, Ruby, uh, the lighting that we have on board the ISS is very similar to the lighting that we would have inside on Earth. And I found that the colors look very similar um, so I think if you had blue eyes on the ground, then you would have blue eyes in space under the lighting inside the ISS. Well, Asher, I think that um, I would side on with the scientists who believe that, that there is a strong possibility that we may find evidence of life or previous life on Mars. And so I, my money would be on Mars. So, and that's where we're headed. And NASA right now has developed a program called Artemis to return to the moon in the area around the moon and the surface of the moon. And then that will be where we rehearse for ultimately going to Mars. And that's where we'll get to answer that question. Well, Tom, there is a toilet in space and the toilet in the US segment of the International Space Station is actually hardware that is, was built both by the Russian Space Agency and NASA. Uh, we do have the capability of actually taking urine and turning it back into drinking water so that we can recycle uh, the urine. Um, to answer your question, we don't routinely wear nappies in space, but we do wear them when we go on a spacewalk because uh, inside the spacesuit, there isn't anywhere else to go.
Well, Fenella, I can honestly say that I don't know that I saw uh, any other new galaxies. Uh, even galaxies, even on the from the International Space Station, require uh, extra aid and we uh, to in order to see them. So we do have binoculars, um, but we don't have a powerful telescope that we use from inside the ISS. So to answer your question, it is it's tough to see galaxies, and I can't honestly say that I, I uh, saw them with my own eyes. Hamish, uh, it's a great question, and the answer is uh, yes, I can see my house and I can probably see yours. We just had needed to know exactly when we were flying overhead and when we looked down. Uh, sometimes we used cameras or sometimes we used binoculars, but the lenses that we had on cameras allowed us to get zoom in very close uh, to things and we could pick out uh, roads on the ground, airports, uh, we could see all sorts of man-made objects in cities. And so we might not have been able to pick out an individual house, but we could definitely pick out the city that you've lived in for sure. Well, Alexandra, I, I, I love to answer this question. I think the most important thing is that you pursue what you love, um, then do that with excellence, and then be a good teammate good team player. Those three things will uh, can take you far in life. Can't guarantee that it will lead to being an astronaut, but it will lead to a fulfilling career. Well, Andrea, I had the opportunity to do a couple of spacewalks. And when, anytime you're outside the International Space Station, um, traveling at that speed and that level, that height above the Earth, it can be nerve wracking, and but I'll tell you the thing that we're probably constantly thinking about most is we don't want to make a big mistake because there's a lot riding on everything that we do. We're doing repairs at the station um, and everybody on the ground is counting on us to do exactly the right thing. And so we make sure that we listen to instructions very carefully and we do exactly what we're told, nothing more and nothing less. Raphael, great question. When we probably, we feel a little bit uh, ill, a little bit when we first arrive in space, and then uh, sometimes when we return to Earth for the first couple of uh, days, hours to days, you can feel a little bit uh, nauseous and maybe not quite right. But in terms of uh, illness, like infectious illness, colds and flu, uh, we do a really good job of making sure that those types of bugs don't get on board the ISS. So the whole time I was up there, I was never sick from uh, an infectious source, um, but we do feel a little bit nauseous when we're first getting used to weightlessness and, um, and that disorientation that can definitely make you feel a little bit sick for a little while. Yes, Sharon, anything that has an odor on the ground has an odor in space. And uh, that's because inside the International Space Station, we have an atmosphere. We have air around us, just like you do uh, here on Earth. We try to reproduce the atmosphere to it. So the composition of the gases and the pressure on, on your body is exactly like it would be on Earth. And for that reason, you can still smell things like coffee and you still can smell things like if somebody hasn't taken a shower and they've just exercised, then you can certainly smell that as well. Yes, and when I look down on the earth, we and all astronauts, when we look down on the earth, we see an earth without borders and we see that there are clearly things that affect us all equally. And you know, this pandemic is an example of one of those things. It doesn't see the borders between nations. It affects us all equally. And the International Space Station is a great example of how nations from you know, astronauts, engineers from across the globe can come together and tackle a really complex problem like putting the International Space Station in orbit around the Earth and keep it there for over two decades and progress science for all of humanity working together to solve these tough problems. And that we'll eventually be able to take this as an international partnership and go on to the moon and then on to Mars.
Wow, Michael, you get the award for asking the most complicated question. And uh, the short answer is I don't know, but I think that this is something that we're gonna need to understand. Uh, Multi-generational gestation, uh, understanding that is gonna be necessary if we're to become a, a multi-planetary species. If we were gonna go and have humans live in partial gravity on the surface of Mars, we would need to understand that. And that's not something that we're actively investigating right now, but I agree with you, this is something that we need to understand. Izzy, Daisy, this is one of my favorite questions to answer. The camaraderie, the, the being a part of the team, and being up there with crewmates who are your friends from around the world is, that by far one of the most uh, cherished memories I'll have. I was up there uh, in space for uh, U.S. Th or American Thanksgiving, for uh, Christmas, um, for multiple birthdays, and celebrating these things with my crewmates, um, sometimes celebrating holidays that are specific to our country, sometimes celebrating um, holidays that were specific to an another country. It was all special. It was all great. And then probably the thing that topped it all off though um, was returning to earth and seeing my family for the first time after i hadn't seen them in over nine months uh, so that was a very special memory too is was bringing it all together and coming back to earth what are the top three things that i missed while i was in, in space well um, I, I miss my family. I, I mentioned that that was uh, that was definitely a challenge. I'm, I'm married. I have four children, and you know, my kids are from teenage down to you range from 16 years old um, down to nine years old, and so it was a very formative part of their lives that I missed uh, by being away for a better part of a year. Um, and so that was definitely hard, but it was something that we we uh, thrived. Uh, my family, I know, thrived while I was away, and we had great connection. And so, so that I would definitely um, say that I miss my family. Um, I say the second thing is that I missed uh, rain and weather, the feel of uh, you know the smell of rain, the feel of rain, uh, the feel of uh, of a cool breeze, the feel of a warm breeze. It, the entire time you're up there, you have a very comfortable environment around you, but there's no variation. It's just constantly one temperature, one humidity, uh, very, very little variance. And so I miss that feeling of, of seeing weather and experiencing weather. Um, and then finally, I would say the thing that I missed was, um, was ice cream. There, we, we, uh, it's hard to get cold frozen ice cream and I, I, I like ice cream. Check out FedSquare's Virtual Square for answers to all of your burning space questions. We'll see you there.